Hello friends, today we will be interviewing an uh, iconic uh, British uh, film producer, writer, uh, Shri Kent Walvin, who has produced basically tens of films, uh, which has been nominated for Oscars, uh, BAFTA, uh, British uh, Evening Film Standard Awards, European Awards. So, Mr. Walvin, uh, welcome uh, for Journalism News Network. Lovely, Doctor. Many thanks. And uh, it's a great pleasure that you've uh, decided to interview me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kent, uh, when did you decide that you would like to devote uh, most part of your life uh, for filmmaking only? Uh, 1969. I was a law graduate, always wanted to be in the film business, so I did what a lot of people often do. I left this country and went to Canada, and there I met a woman. And it's a woman that everybody needs, Lady Luck. And I just happened to be in Canada at the right time, and... Uh, after a little while, we started to make films, and that's how I started, in that cold winter of 69, 1970, and then I've made films all over the world since then. What was the most important thing you learned while making the film? Uh, be honest with your investors. That's the most important thing. The film business has two words in it. One is film and one in business, and one of them isn't true, and it's not film. It's not really a business. Um, it is a very high-risk business. And you need to explain that to investors. And so what is now uh, a dirty word, which is tax, always used to be a rather good word. Uh, so the film business often relies on what are called tax shelters to survive. So to answer your question, Always be open and honest with your investors. Kent, what according to your views is like, uh, it says that there's a trend uh, that less and less people basically are going to the theatres to watch the films. I still like to go to the cinema with my wife because there's something about experiencing something with a lot of people around you. Do you think that uh, film uh, making business model is changing drastically with the advent of Netflix and Amazon Prime? There have always been financiers in the film business. Um, there were the big Hollywood studios that are still there, and then each year maybe it was VHS tape, then it was DVD, then it was satellite. Now it's internet-delivered Netflix. There'll always be methods of paying for it and people who want to pay for it who want to broadcast it so netflix is just another hugely successful company in a long line of successful companies and long may that continue which film uh, according to you has been the most inspiring for you uh, singing in the rain and what was so special in that it was made at a time when equipment was very heavy if you look at singing in the rain they had to do very long shots with very heavy equipment and they tended to do it live on huge sound stages. Um, it is a moment of filmmaking that I missed. But to have great real talents like Debbie Reynolds, Gene Kelly, uh, Donald O'Connor, that was just great. And so every Christmas I watch Singing in the Rain with anybody who happens to be in my house. And I love it. It is a great film. If there is one thing which you believe can make a film industry better, what it will be? A great believer in technology. Now we are entering the era of VR and AR, virtual reality and augmented reality. And I think that that, with artificial intelligence and robotics, will make for a very exciting future for what I still call cinema but it is just recorded entertainment. It is just engaging our brains, our senses, into something that is quite extraordinary. So technology is a huge driver of entertainment. Uh, do you think that uh, Hollywood films are basically made with a very bloated budget? For example, the recent sequel of Ben-Hur, you know, takes around $100 million to make, and return is only around $11 million. It's a difficult question to answer, except telling you that budgets are smudgets. Um, whatever they tell you it cost, you might believe it. But trust me, um, the budget for anything 
is whatever you can find out with your accountant. It is not necessarily the case that the film cost 500 million. The reason that it does that is that if my uh, wife and I are going to take our £20 note and buy two tickets and get some change for it, it is human nature, which might not apply to my wife and I, but it might apply to lots of other people. If you're going to be charged £8 a ticket, you might see a film that costs £500 million as opposed to one that costs 20000 It seems a better value. <laughs> so that is not a truism, but it's, a, it's an answer. <laughs> what, according to you, is the future of filmmaking business, considering that uh, numbers going to theatres are considerably down now in the last two decades? I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, if cinema attendances go down, people who are watching it on the internet and paying for it that way. So it swings and roundabouts. But always remember, uh, I'm going to hold up. This, these things are a limiting factor. My eyes are a limiting factor. I have 24 hours of which I might need to sleep. So entertainment is still about whatever time we can fit it in. And technology, whether it's social media, whether in fact it's screens in every room of our house, our kitchens, our bathrooms and so forth, but we are still 24-hour-a-day animals. And that is the big limiting factor. Thank you very much. Thank you.